Now for these slots, they're not very wide. Um, it's really just a single cut slot. Let's zoom up on that for a second. We're going to do an analyze dynamic and I'm going to pick that radius in there and it says that that is an eighth inch radius so we can really just go through there with a quarter inch cutter for that full length and that would be the slot that's all we really need what I found is the best way to do that is to actually put an extra piece of geometry in here there's other ways but this I think is going to be the simplest we want to be on that center line in this case. So I'm going to tell it um, that I want to create a line that's extra thick, easy to see. So I'm going to come down here to line width and I'm going to pick a really fat line width. And then I'm going to go to create line endpoints. And don't be afraid to zoom up on this. I want to go from the midpoint of the front of the slot to the center at the back side of the slot and we'll OK that. So that's the line we're going to be cutting down and I'm going to put the center of the tool on the center of that line and just cut straight through and pull out. Really pretty simple. So that's all the geometry we need. We're going to go to tool paths, C axis, cross contour. We're going to switch back to wireframe selection. And I'm just picking that one line. Make sure you're picking it from the front side. And we'll OK that. For our tool, we will need a different tool. So go to Select Library Tool. If you don't see flat end mills, go to your filter and say None except flat end mills. and we are going to pick a quarter inch flat end mill and for my comment I'll say mill the slot now for our cut parameters we've got compensation is off because I want to be directly on that center line so don't worry about whether this says left or right if this says off lead in and out. I do want a lead in and for my entry value I want this to come in tangent again I'm gonna make this hundred and eighty percent of the diameter of the tool plenty of clearance to lead in no arc radius and for the exit I'm gonna leave this turned off when it gets to the end of that line I want it to pull straight out we're not doing multiple passes for our linking parameters, the depth is going to be in relationship to the geometry that we picked. So that's okay. That's where it is. My retract, I'm going to set it a little bit higher. And my clearance, I want it to be even higher than that. And that should be all we need. Let's okay that. And there's our slot. We could pick back plot. And that's what we have. Looks good. But that's just one slot. Now we need to do the other slots. Now we could put in geometry for those and do the same thing, but there's a much easier way. What we're going to do is go to Toolpath Transform. What we want to do is rotate that toolpath that we just did around this center. Now if you just pick rotate right now, it'll tell you that you should pick tool plane first. So I'm just telling you that so that you can pick tool plane first and not get the warning message. So with tool plane selected, I'll say rotate. I'm going to pick the operation that I want it to rotate, which is our cross contour. We'll go to our rotate parameters. I want it to do three more. The angle in between is going to be 90 degrees and then we need to tell it 
which view to rotate around. So I'm going to tell it the rotational view is going to be as viewed through the right side of the part. And we'll OK that. And now you can see the other toolpath here. Another one for the bottom. And another one for this side. 